Hello again. One of the things which irritates me most about censorship on sites such as this one, and has, by the way, the most frightful implications, is that it is impossible even to discuss anthropology or um, even learning disability in a neutral way. The dangers of operating a policy specifically designed to prevent anybody asking questions about anthropology or talking about that research in that field or about some types of intellectual disability is that topics like that are then driven underground. When things are debated openly, then falsehood and lies seldom last long. It is when everything must be done in secret that myths and legends flourish, which is a bad thing. I can best illustrate what I mean by discussing the possible differences between the skulls of black people and those of white people. As viewers will know, it is often claimed that black people lived in this or that part of the world in the past, sometimes dynastic Egypt, other times ancient Greece or Roman Britain. It has even been claimed that black people reached America before anybody from Europe. These claims are based upon the measurement of skulls which have been found. In Nazi Germany, the measurement of skulls to establish racial origin was a very big thing. The thumbnail to this video shows somebody from the racial hygiene department in the, uh, Nazi Germany measuring the skull of a gypsy to see what category she should be placed in racially. The problem is that this is no more reliable than the Victorian pseudoscience of phrenology. Most of us have mixed origins and try to place skulls in neat categories such as Aryan, Alpine, Slav, Jew, Gypsy, Black African and Oriental is not really possible. That's why most people drop this nonsense after the end of the Second World War. It has been revived in recent years and it is suggested that forensic scientists can examine the skull and establish whether the owner was black or white. This is done through computer programs like Fordisk. In the description to this video I give a link to an academic paper on Fordisk, which was a very popular system, and it uh, finds that this method is accurate only in 1% of cases in ideal circumstances. This has not stopped propagandists for black history using the technique to show that black people lived in Britain thousands of years ago. A skeleton from the time of the Roman occupation found in Sussex was examined by this method and it was asserted that the woman, so-called beachy head lady, was of sub-Saharan origin. This was done purely through using craniometry, that is to say measuring the skull and measuring the proportions and distances between various parts of the skull and the facial bones. Of course, it was all nonsense because DNA testing showed that she was actually from Cyprus. I give a link to the Wikipedia article about this case. Um, this is how craniometry is often used today. Now, we can discuss this aspect of craniometry, the measurement of skulls, openly, as long as we are careful to toe the line that black people, say, have always lived in Europe or that the skulls of black people have been found in America, which predate the arrival of Europeans. Discussing the use of craniometry in cases like that is perfectly acceptable, and you're not going to get banned by YouTube. They welcome that sort of thing. If though we start looking at other aspects of the matter, for example the volume of skulls, an integral part of craniometry incidentally, we soon run into difficulties. In the 19th century, a lot of research was conducted along uh, the lines of craniometry and as part of uh, the development of this so-called science to try and measure the capacity of skulls and see if it varied between ethnic groups. This was done by pouring lead shot into skulls 
until they were full and then seeing how much they would hold. I will not, or I should say dare not, reveal what was found during these experiments. Of course, some of these experiments have been debunked and the findings remain uncertain. And in fact, it's quite possible that the whole thing was mismanaged and was a nonsense. But even telling viewers what was claimed to have been found will result in this channel being suspended. This ties in with what I said about the desirability of free discussion, because this subject is to be found on what might, one might call sites which are not mainstream. Why can't we talk freely about this part of craniometry here? The reason is that YouTube has a policy on hate speech and gives very precise examples of what can or cannot be discussed. For instance, when talking about these categories, age, caste, disability, ethnicity, gender identity, nationality, race, immigration status, religion, sex, gender, sexual orientation, victims of a major event, veterans status. One cannot say people with the attributes noted above are less intelligent than us because their brains are smaller. Now this is completely grotesque for several reasons. It means that nobody can discuss microcephaly on YouTube. This is a disability where the skull is very, from its congenital uh, disability, the skull is very, very small and the brain correspondingly tiny. It is invariably associated with a grave intellectual deficit. However, suggesting that such people have learning difficulties because their brains are reduced in size would be sufficient to get you banned from YouTube for hate speech because we are talking here of a disability and you simply can't say that uh, someone belonging to that group might be less intelligent than us because their brains are smaller. Again, I don't say that it is so. I'm saying this is a hypothetical case. It's weird. It means that you could be an expert in disability and want to discuss cranium um, microcephaly on YouTube and you would be banned for hate speech. In the case of craniometry, of course, we cannot talk about the possibility of differing volumes of skulls, nor any possible connection between skull volume, brain size and intelligence. Again, I do not say that these are inextricably linked. This may well not be the case, but it is forbidden even to explore the topic. Open debate is the best remedy for exposing falsehood and myths. The truth needs no protection, either from YouTube or anybody else. To find ourselves in a situation where we cannot discuss the possibility even of an intellectual deficit in victims of microcephaly is bizarre. About as bizarre as being free to talk about certain aspects of craniometry but forbidden from touching upon other parts of the system on pain of being banned for inciting hatred. <laughs>